straight to the point in your rack. So we're using the Shure PSM1000 series wireless transmitter for in-ears. We have three dual units, which makes a total of six stereo mixes. And we also have an antenna combiner, as well as a wireless vocal mic receiver. Once we have all these devices racked up, we need to get them all connected with the BNC cables, which are basically antenna extensions. Um, sometimes the racks have like a wireless router type of antenna, but you really want to get a bigger antenna um, that has a bit more range and you can place them on various parts of the stage. Um, we usually have one on each side of the stage, sometimes two on one side and um, it gets good coverage for when our singers walk in a back and forth, cross, and yeah. Now that we have our antennas connected, we can start making the audio connections between our rack and our mixer or stage box. We have six stereo in-ears, so like one and two would be for one mix, three and four is another, five and six another, seven and eight is another, and Depending on your mixer, you can link one and two together so that way it's just one control for those. So in the back of the rack, you can see our antenna combiner, which has shorter B and C cables, um, which connect directly into each of our in-ear rack units. Here you can see our mix bus page where like one and two is one person, three and four is another, and so on. Um, they don't have to be stereo, they can be mono, um, but it's up to you. After I have everything connected, um, I usually like to test for signal, and you could use that with a microphone, or I can just do it with like a pink noise generator, and um, send it directly to that bus, and make sure it's showing up on the mixer, as well as you can see level on the in-ear rack itself. So when I send level to mix 1, it should be going on the left side of mix 1 on the rack. And I send level to mix 2, it should send level to the right side of that person's mix. So that's how you know we have stereo information going on and you can test that for all the mixes. The most important thing to do after connecting all of this is to scan for open frequencies you don't want to just turn this on and go for it. You're most likely going to get some kind of interference. And um, usually you have to scan this at every show. Every new place we go to is going to be a little different. Places like Las Vegas or really busy city areas can be really clogged with radio signals. And um, it's always best to double check this stuff. Each brand will have like a slightly different process of scanning and syncing. Um, if you have the Shure system, you can kind of follow along the screen what I'm doing. But basically, you're going to use a body pack to scan it, and then you'll sync it with the unit in the rack. And um, depending on the model, it'll allow you to deploy open frequencies to this entire system, or you'll have to go one at a time for each one. Since in my case we have a pretty good system, I only had to use one pack to scan for the whole system and now all I have to do is press sync on each additional rack and just bring um, the pack next to its sensor and it'll sync right up. Um, if you have a lower model, you probably have to do this manually and scan each pack and um, it takes a lot of time. All you have to do is hover the body pack about an inch or two away from its sensors um, it's usually a little red or something, or sometimes it's part of the screen. When you do your wireless scanning, it's best to turn off everything that you can that's generating wireless frequencies, and then slowly scan and turn on each additional one. That way you know each thing is guaranteed to be like open and clean. For wireless vocal mics, you're actually going to do the scan on the rack, and then you turn on the microphone and hover it against the rack. 
and it'll sync right up. Um, usually have a separate antenna for the microphone from the um, in-ear rack. Sometimes you'll get a sync fail and all you have to do is just click retry or something and try again and maybe you'll get it the second time. Talk into the mic and check for level on the rack and you should be good to go. So that's pretty much it. You just have your antennas that are connected with B and C cables to your racks as well as the XLR or quarter inch connections between your mixer outputs to your in-ear rack and also an XLR connected to the back of your wireless mic receiver, which then goes into an input on your mixer or stage box. When I first got into in-ear racks, it was kind of complicated for me. And um, if you really just focus on one wireless unit at a time and really follow the flow and figure out how to scan it right and then add additional units, um, that'll be your best bet. I'm more of a front of house engineer. I had to teach myself and watch YouTube videos to learn how to do in-ear racks. Um, if anyone knows a better way to do any of this, please let me know in the comments. I'm gonna try to make more straight to the point videos for you guys, just real simplified stuff. Anything to do with stages, mixing, studio stuff. I have a lot of friends that are in bands that are setting up in-ear racks and backing track systems and they're always asking me, you know, what should I do? And a lot of it is the same questions over and over. So I just thought it'd be time to make a video. Hopefully they'll get better. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed.